Jason, do you have concerns about Brandon Streeter as offensive coordinator? You know, I I really don't. Um, I thought Streeter did a pretty good job when he was offensive coordinator at Richmond. Had ran some pretty successful offenses with the Spiders over there. Um, and, and especially with Kyle Richardson being involved as the passing game coordinator, he's got the air raid background. They ran some really high-powered offenses is why he was at – head coach at Northwestern. I'm kind of excited to see some of the new passing concepts they talked a little bit about in the spring. Um, I I thought Clemson's offense had gotten a little stale under Tony Elliott. I thought teams had started picking up on some t- tendencies, and, and I thought that started as early as 2019 and never really got addressed. So I'm hoping that we see some differences this year and – you know, they talked about simplifying some things, getting the balls in the playmakers' hands, using the middle of the field more because Clemson's not used the middle of the field a lot in recent years, and getting the ball to playmakers out in space. That That's some of the things they've gotten away from that they were doing, like, say, 2015, 2016, 2017, and kind of gotten away from, started attacking down the field more once Lawrence got there. But, yeah, I, I like the idea – I like Brandon Streeter. Let's put it like that. I, I like Brandon Streeter. I'm, I'm willing to keep an open mind. Um, I'm not a doom and gloom guy, so I'm willing to keep an open mind, see how it goes. I, I think he's going to be just fine as long as he's fully got the reins. He's truly got the reins. I think he'll be he'll, he'll be just fine. I want to see how they use Will Taylor because he, he looked really good before he got hurt. And um, uh, fast, quick, twitchy guy. We saw a lot of um, – quarterback runs with him when he got in a game and I'm really interested to see how they're going to use him. Um, I'm, I'm extremely high on Will Taylor. Um, he, he, he's going to be fully moved over to receiver now. No, no double dipping. They were fixing the move. They were fixing to make that move when he got hurt last year anyways. But he, he'll be full. He, he'll go through fall camp as a receiver and yeah, I think he'll bring a different dynamic to the offense. Clemson was mi- missing a true slot receiver last year. They didn't have that small, twitchy guy. You had to play Justin Ross and Bo Collins in the slot, and, and I think it limited some things they could do. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, the jury's still out on Streeter. I wasn't really super excited about the hire originally, but I like what he's saying. He's saying all the right things. At least at least he's saying what I want to hear, and Jason touched on some of that. Um you know, some more downfield shots, uh, using the middle of the field, getting the tight ends involved more, which has been, you know, they, the, t- the tight ends at Clemson have basically been on a milk carton since George Leggett left. Uh, they just don't. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, all those things I, I like. So we'll see. Um, I mean, listen, everyone was sort of pretty much done with Tony Elliott. Like, like Jason said, the, the, the offense had gotten kind of stale. So if Tony Elliott leaves, uh, you know, you got to say, if you don't hire Streeter, who's better? I mean, I'm not saying there wouldn't be a better hire out there, but tell me who it is. And so I don't really know if there was anybody better available in the first place. And plus, there's obviously a relationship there uh, with Dabo and, and the Clemson program in general with Streeter. So it, it did make sense. Yeah, I, I got no problem with Streeter getting a shot. He's already a quarterback's coach. Um, I, I'm kind of interested to see how, how how this thing works out, you know. I I thought at first Dabo might take a look outside for an offensive coordinator, but it didn't take long at all to realize that that, that never was going to happen. He he was straight up hiring from within. You know, Streeter's been there for a while. He was the guy. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how it works out. But I, I, I have some confidence in Streeter. I think he'll be all right. If I'm reading everybody – Go I was just going to say, if I'm reading everybody uh, correctly on their take on DJ – it seems like you want to see him get more support from the offensive line. You want to see the wide receivers play like they did five years ago to, to, to judge him, to evaluate him. But at the same time, you're not sold on him. It seems like everybody's kind of in that camp. He had a bad season, but there were reasons he had a bad season outside of him making bad decisions and poor throws. Combination of both. Combination of both. There's, there's just look. There's there's no two ways about it. There's still things he has to work on. Uh, his footwork, his accuracy, all of those things. I listen. I really like DJ. I think he's a good kid. And so it's hard for me, somebody like me, to bash a good kid. But at the end of the day, you have to play the best player, right? And one of the things that I that 
at least from my point of view, that DJ lacks that you haven't that you didn't see with um, or the, rather you did see with Trevor Lawrence, uh, even Kelly Bryant, uh, Deshaun Watson is sort of a fire. Now, he's very calm, which is good, but he doesn't seem to really have the fire that those other players had, you know, like sort of the will to win. He's very calm and, and almost too laid back. Maybe it's the California in him. I don't know. <laughs> but I like to see a little bit more fire out, out of my quarterback. I totally agree. You know, <clears throat> I was on the sidelines for a lot of games last year, including the Georgia game, and I kept waiting. You know, you get used to it after watching guys like Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence and, and like Pete said, even Kelly Bryant to a degree. Um, you get used to seeing those Clemson quarterbacks kind of flip that switch and I kept waiting to see it with DJ in that Georgia game and it just never came there was one game last year that I thought hey there it is there's that spark and I can't remember it might have been might have been the Boston College game or I can't remember it was one of those games that that was was real it was one of those games that was real close and they ran him a bunch at the end I think it was Boston College but um I was like there it is he just flipped that switch you know he got a little we saw a little fire from it but to me that was we never saw it again and I, I'm kind of with Pete there. I'm wondering if he's a little too laid back, you know, because he, he seems to be like a really great kid. I'm just not sure exactly what kind of leader he is. And, uh-huh. and I 100% agree that all of the problems of the offense last year were not on DJ. The receivers weren't very good. You can't start six different group of offensive linemen in the first nine games and expect to have any consistency. Clemson got nothing out of the center position last year, especially over the first half of the season. Um, Matt Bockhorn is just not not cut out to play that position. He's much better at guard, and, and that's going to be one of the biggest questions going on into this season. Have they got that position figured out with Will Putnam? Yeah. And also, I think uh, it's heard true to say that DJ was hurt a lot last year too, and um, I think that was a uh, I think that's part of his problem. But also, I think him losing weight also will help him out with his movement. So I saw that he, um, I think, in the spring game and said that he was down to, what, 235, somewhere around there? But, 235. Um, but yeah. um, I don't think DJ was 100% healthy ever after the first game. I think he got banged up against George, and he was never healthy after that. Yeah. And, and then he broke he broke the index finger on his throwing hand, had a sprain, PCL in one of his knees. I mean, he, he had several injuries last year. Yeah, but- that's one of the other issues, aside from injury with DJ, is Clemson is, loves to run quarterbacks. They, all, I mean, under Dabo Sweeney, that's been a staple of their offense, you know, no matter who the offensive coordinator is. And um, DJ, he's just not going to be the runner that Deshaun Watson was. He's not going to be the runner that Taj Boyd was. He's not going to be the runner that Trevor Lawrence was. He's not going to be the runner that Kelly Bryant was. He's just not. I mean, he's just not as athletic as those guys in the running game. So that I think that hurts him a little bit, too. Uh, I mean, obviously, losing weight will help him be a little faster. But at the end of the day, he's, he's just not going to be what those other guys were in the run game. He's just not. No, he surely is. He's not going to be that guy. He's going to. He might be a guy that can get you a few tough yards, but you know, he's not going to be a guy that can break off a twenty-yard run a couple times a game for you in a big moment. He, he's he's just not that guy. He's not that fleet of foot. Right. I saw somebody. Uh, I think it was a Georgia fan just say that uh, Clemson won't win another national championship again. I mean, people go with spurts. I mean, Georgia took, what, 40-something years to win their national championship in 1956 before that. So, I mean, you just never know. And I I, I don't want to take over talk about what I think about Clemson um, this year, but I think they're going to be much improved. I mean, NC State, it took the NC State a miracle with Justin Ross missing that catch in the end zone. And then uh, Georgia – I mean, it was two, three, it was two, three, and it was an INT that helped Georgia win the game. I mean, I, I just don't. I mean, Clemson's not that far off. I mean, they had a bad year. I mean, it happens. I mean, it happens to everybody. I mean, sometimes it just, it just the time of the year. Pitt was the only team I really think beat Clemson, but I think a lot of players was out. Was out, and the Shipley catches that pass, and uh, Brett Carter and. Uh, Makubo was in the game as freshmen when they hit that long touchdown pass on them. I mean, and there's a miscommunication on that play. So I really don't think people are that far off. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, let's be I real. Know. Pitt was a really good team last year. Let's give them credit, too. I mean, I, I think they were better than Clemson was last year, and that's really all it comes down to. 
Right. Uh, now, will that be, will that be the same this year? Probably not. I think that Clemson's just a, a, obviously a better program, uh, more sustainable program than Pitt is right now. But Pitt had a great team last year and a and a generational quarterback to lead him. <laughs> and so NC State seems to be the team everybody's latching on to, and I think they're really good, and they were good last year, and everybody seems to be I, – I don't know if people stretch a narrative a little bit too much looking for the next team that's going to jump in and challenge the big boys, but NC State, I see them in a ton of top tens that people are throwing out there, and I don't know if they're that good, but uh, how much of a challenge are they going to be? Yeah, I think North, I think North Carolina State is the team. If, if somebody's going to give Clemson a run in the Atlantic, that's who it is. If if you ask me, um, pretty much bringing everybody back, got that quarterback back. Um, but 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 they also got to come to Death Valley this year, and I don't think the way they celebrated that victory last year sat well with some of the Clemson players. You know, Dave Dorn smoking that cigar on the sideline and stuff. <laughs> Granted, you know, it was the first time he had ever beaten them. You know, and. and all good for him, but I, I'm really high on that North Carolina State team. I think that's a ten win team, no doubt about it. Um, I think you're not worried about Wake Forest offense. Absolutely not. Ooh. That that is Wake Forest offense against Clemson defense. Yeah, they one, struggled last one year. One of the biggest mismatches every season. Everybody hops that game up, and Clemson's defense eats that offense up, and it's not even close. I mean, Clemson's got too much speed on defense for what Wake Forest does on offense. And I don't think – I don't see it being any different this year. To me, it's North Carolina State. If there's a team in the Atlantic that's going to challenge Clemson, it's going to be North Carolina State. I, I just – I think they bring a lot back. They got they got a lot going for them this year. I can't I can't tell you all the guys I don't follow them that closely. I really yeah. haven't looked at their roster since last season. But I just think that's a 10-11 win team. But they got to come to Death Valley, so a place they haven't won since 2000. It's been a long time in, in the early 2000s sometime, I think. It's been a while. So it, it's, it won't be easy for them to unseat Clemson in the Atlantic. Uh, I'm not as high on NC State as everybody else seems to be for whatever reason. I understand <laughs> coming back. But I, first of all, I'm, I'm a, a guy that likes to look at trends. And I don't know if Dave Doran has ever put together two, uh, you know, good seasons in a row. Um, I say good. I mean, what, nine or ten win seasons in a row. Good for them. Um, and also, the worst Clemson team in ten years and the best NC State team in ten years, it took double overtime for them to win it at home. So, like Jason said, this, this game's in Death Valley. I'm not saying NC State can't beat Clemson. In college football, anything can happen. But – the trend says that uh, that 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 head coach in particular, Dave Dorn, has a history of losing a lot of games that he should win. And I, I could easily see them losing three games this year. One of them to Clemson. Yeah, they've only won nine games in back to back seasons once under yeah. Dave Dorn. There you go. And that was propped up by a horrible non-conference schedule, I guarantee you. East Carolina, Old Dominion, James Madison. Now remember, East Carolina was the big on that. What's that? That was, that was in 2017-2018. Terrence West, appreciate you being here. Georgia over Clemson, we got you. No doubt about that. But again, to uh, DeAndre's point, to DeAndre's point, my goodness, it was a 10-3 game with a pick six that decided it. You know, that was, you know, for Clemson being so horrible last year and for Georgia being the most dominant defense we've seen in 15 years, that's <laughs> a pretty darn close football game. I, um, I still don't think I, – I, I, I'm not saying they won't great. Don't get me wrong, but what elite quarterback did they play? I mean, when they played Alabama the second time around – What I elite mean, quarterback they, did they play? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When they got Bryce Young, Bryce Young lit him up. Bryce Young was not elite. If Bryce Young about, was an elite, I don't know who's elite. There's no that, elite quarterback. That's only one. <laughs> That's the only one I can go with. And then he got this. Well, I'm going to go with Bryce Young. I just watched about every player on that defense hear his name called the other day in that draft. Yeah, they, they <laughs> were crazy. <laughs> like to hear. They were crazy, ridiculous good. That's really the best really defense I've seen in I don't know how long. That Georgia defense was nasty. It was. I don't, I don't think it'll be in close to 2018. Yeah. Oh, Terrible. I don't know. They they just didn't let people even run their offense. You like they're just like throwing yeah. guards into the backfield at running back. You know, it's just they're just disrupting plays. It's just 
crazy how good they were.